Hey guys, this podcast is brought to you in part by Squarespace. Make your future brighter and your ideas brighter with a unique website from Squarespace. Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kind in just a few clicks. Customize everything from look and feel to settings and products using templates created by world-class designers. Nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code COLT and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. This week on the podcast, I'm in Japan. Ethan Page tells me about his first Japanese tour. I made Joey Ryan dick flip himself. And my mom tells you who she thinks is the most handsome wrestler. Enjoy the show. This is the art of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. All right, how you guys doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to The Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's still a life podcast. It's still a personal journal. It's very much an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. And of course, my name is still Cole Cabana. I'm a Japanese citizen. I'm basically a Japanese citizen. I'm a world traveler. I'm a documentarian. Okay, I'm a guy who puts uh, uh, an iPhone next to people during situations. (laughs) Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am not sitting here live in my studio. It did kind of sound like I said Nazi, right? I'm a Nazi not sitting here in my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. I am in a hotel room in Shinkaiwa, Shinkaiwa, Japan. It's not Shinkaiwa, Shinkaiwa. It's just Shinkaiwa. I am in Shinkaiwa, Japan in a hotel room living my best wrestler life. Doors closing. Before we do go any further, uh, I wanted to say hi to you guys on the train. I'm on the CDA Blue Line here in Chicago, Illinois. This is the train that I've taken every single trip for the past 14 years, I would say, that I've been living in this city, give or take. Obviously, I moved to Louisville and Tampa a little bit. Uh, but as my story has been told, the second I got fired from the WWE, I moved back to uh, Chicago because I love Chicago. And I always find it fascinating. I, I'm on the train right now going from my apartment to the airport. Uh, again, this is the trip I always do. But it's like I'm going to Tokyo, Japan. And there's people here just working or going somewhere, going to see their family, going to do something, going to shop. And it's like they don't even know. You guys don't even know. And I remember the first time I went to Japan, I just thought I was the biggest star of the CTA train. Hold the doors for me. I got these bags. You know where these bags are going? They're going to Tokyo. And now, you know, probably 50 international trips later, this is just an everyday thing. I love the idea that I I live this crazy life, this wild life, traveling literally all over the world. And uh, I can come on this train and I can just, I don't know, be immersed or just mingle with, with uh, the everyday people of Chicago. And I bet a lot of these people have some crazy stories that I don't even think about. And I like the idea that I'm one of these people with a crazy story. And that every week's going to open up with me being on this train because that's going to be a common. Uh, when Kevin Steen would do his uh, YouTube show, he would always you know, open up being in that car. And I obviously this is a very constant in my life is traveling on this train. But uh, I thought it was important that ev- that everyone knows this is a big part of my life. This is who I am. This is what I do. This is how I get to the airport every single week. And uh, I'm excited to take this trip to Japan. And I'm excited to talk to you guys. I hope you guys enjoy uh, what's coming in the future. All right, let's throw it back to that opening. Is that how I'm going to do stuff now? Did I sound, I sounded kind of like, I should be more peppy. Why am I more peppy on the microphone? 
and less peppy when I when I'm surrounded by people staring at me talking into my own iPhone. And no one will ever know. Before we go any further, this is a fan supported listener supported podcast supported by people just like you. We give you free charge every single Thursday. ColtCommander.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, please. Tell your friends, tell them, let them know. And we're going to be doing this giveaway, but all the stuff is at home, so I have no way to take pictures and show you what to give away. So as the new show starts rolling around, that's when we're going to do some giveaways and try to get the word out about the show, which is a great way to support. The best way, though, of course, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. DigitalColt.com is back up, baby. It's back and running. Super happy. Big Paul, three cheers for Paul. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hop, hooray. T-shirts, DVDs, pictures, a wrestling book, wrestling figures, keychains, gear, my three independent wrestling documentary movies that are available, one of them starring uh, the great Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan, who's making a comeback, which is super exciting. It's all available, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com. And here we are. Here we are in a new era of the art of wrestling. I appreciate you sticking along with me. Again, I, I think the idea is if you enjoyed the openings, if you enjoyed me talking about what I've been doing, this is kind of the heightened version of it. And uh, heightened isn't a word. Heightened would be a word. But that's the charm of cabanaisms. <laughs> I started this podcast where I would talk to my friends about their struggles in professional wrestling or struggles to become a professional wrestler or struggles to get to the top of the world of professional wrestling or whatever it might be. I started at a point in my life where I was unsure with my own career. I didn't know where it was going, but I knew I had a good story and I knew I had put in a lot of time and I'd struggle to do what I love to do. And when I would talk to my friends, we would talk about their past. We'd talk about their journey, their story, what happened in the past. And here we are, eight years later. I started in 2010. Here we are in 2018. And now I am about to be 38 years old. And I'm still having that struggle. It's such a weird place for me where I am at in my career. In terms of wrestling status, there's a lot of people below me. And there's a lot of people above me. So what this is, is now an exact journey of what a 37-year-old becoming a 38-year-old man in the world of independent professional wrestling is all about. I don't even know my goals. I don't even know where I'm going or why I'm going there. And I'm not talking physical places. I'm talking emotional places. I'm talking about career-driven places. What the fuck am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this? I'm soon to be a 40-year-old full-time independent professional wrestler. I hope you guys come along with this journey. I hope we realize that this is slice of life in the world of podcasting. I don't know what the journey's going to be, but we're not talking about the past journeys. We're talking about the present. This is it. In the moment, week to week, it's exactly what it is. It's a bizarre reality show in your ears. And for the future, I hope you come along with me while we're in the present. I did get on that train. I did go to Japan. I got on a flight. And I have a status on United Airlines that's pretty legendary. And it's not from being like a rich person. It's the idea that I just fly so much. I'm allowed in this secret lounge. And then I get six first class upgrades a year for free, which is pretty good because these flights can cost $5,000. But the company pays for my flight. And then I use these upgrades, and now I'm upgraded to first class, and then I get to go into the secret lounge. So essentially what's happening is I need to take advantage. I don't know if you guys are like that, but that's just how I, like, I need to take advantage of everything. If there's going to be something sweet, I need to take advantage of everything. And basically that means food, right? There's free food. There was free steak. There was just, like, all you can eat everything at this lounge. And then I go on the flight, and then there's just a meal for kings. This is something I've done a lot because, luckily, I get six of these upgrades. I fly internationally a lot. So I'll use these upgrades a lot and every time just like a fucking pig i'm going at it so four hours at o'hare and then 14 hours or 13 hours in the air and uh it, for me it's all about food it's just all about food which sucks because i'm in a business where it's about your body and you're trying to stay lean and you're wrestling in spandex but as a as a fucking carnival folk which i am growing up on the idea of like this is the only way that i'm making money i need to take advantage of everything if something's free I'm digging in, and uh, I did eat like a pig, but eventually uh, I did make it to Japan, and uh, I was picked up by uh, my Taiwanese friend. I just got picked up from uh, a 13-hour flight from the airport from Japan. It was fine. 
I got I went first class. Rekka, were you impressed that I went first class? Yeah, I was impressed. Are you impressed? <laughs> you ever you ever fly first class? No, never. Never. Yeah. Um, and so, what happens is we get picked up, not by the DDT office. When I was with Noah, we get picked up by a giant bus. Those are the directions. We get picked up by a giant bus. But in DDT, sometimes it's just, it's just a local dude. And then now it's uh, Rekka, who's from Taiwan. Is that right? Yeah, I'm from Taiwan. He's, he also waved, but <laughs> nobody can hear you. I am from Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how did? Why, why are you the one to dr- drive me today? Why? Why? Because uh, I can speak English. Because <laughs> you can speak English? Nobody wants to drive? Yeah, maybe the other guy can drive, but they cannot speak English. Okay. Yeah. So perfect. So I so Rekka's on driving duties. Yeah. How long have you been in DDT? Uh, two years. Two years. Yeah. Did you wrestle in Taiwan? Yeah. And then how did you get to D? Oh, you you didn't you came for somebody else before DDT, right? Yeah, because uh. Just the way. <laughs> Because two years ago, I in Japan, but not in Tokyo. I wrestling in Okinawa, and the DDT uh, go to the uh, Okinawa. Yeah. Yeah, and they talk to me. They want me. They to, recruited uh, you. Yeah. Do you know why? Do you know why Americans love Okinawa? Really? Do you know why? I don't know. Have you ever seen the movie Karate Kid? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Karate Kid. Karate Kid. Very famous American movie. Wow. Yeah? I don't know. Uh, Mis- Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi. Do you know? Ah, Miyagi. Ah, I know. Miyagi-san. Miyagi, hi. He was from Okinawa. Oh. Very famous. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I... You understand the directions? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, um, okay. Uh, thank you for picking me up. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's, you're welcome. It's okay? Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, I'm welcome. You're a hero. Yeah. Arigato How do you say thank you in Taiwanese? Shishie. Shishie? Yeah. Shishie. I guess it was kind of lackluster leading up to the show. Not much really to it. I was put in this hotel because I've talked about this DDT dojo before, and they're moving to a very nice one, which is exciting. But, I mean, it's just not, you know, and and this isn't talking bad about DDT, I guess. I don't know. That's not the point meant to be. But, oh, I mean, it. I'm pretty sure it was a murderer's house in a in, in the 70s or maybe the tens. That this house was definitely built in like 1700 in Japan. It was just cold cement walls, just like you could just picture like old samurais living there. And there was too many people there. It was a full house. They had stuffed too many people in it. So luckily for me, I was thrown in a hotel. I barely got some sleep. I met up with the other gaijin. That's foreigners if you don't know. And uh, we headed on the train. So, Mike Bailey is now wiping bird shit off of his bag. <laughs> is that right? That is correct. And you think that's good luck? I think so, yeah. Well, we'll see tonight. If I sell all my merch, then good luck. This is the merch bag. <coughs> all right, we're taking the train. Um, Reko, from what? Shin- Shinkawa? Shinkoiwa. To what? Shinkoiwa. Shinko. To what? Huh? To where? Rigoku? To where? Ryogoku. Rigoku Hall. Uh, yeah. Okay, how far is that train ride? Maybe 15. 15 minutes? Yeah. And did you pay for it? My pay? Did you pay for everybody? No, no, no. Everybody pay for yourself. Everybody pays for ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, have you enjoyed that part of this? <laughs> no, it actually pisses me off a little bit. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I said before in Noah, they would pick me up from the airport in a big bus. And then we'd always go to our own shows. And then yeah. in, in DDT... You shouldn't have to cover your own way to a show. You're just... Do you not like that I'm shit talking already? I, d- I disagree. I think, <laughs> I think DDT takes great care of us. They put us up in a nice, nice house, a nice hotel for what cold. What fantasy are you living in? Well, maybe for cold. 
Nicole. Yeah. Nicole has a nice hotel. Becca, what do you think of the DDT house? The DDT house. What was that? The doors are just like this. <laughs> he says it's. He says it's like the excrement on the bag of speedball <laughs> like that. Doing like a vlog for your ears, an ear vlog, yeah, yeah. So would that be an e, an e vlog, e vlog, yeah. yeah, something like that. But I'll, I'll it's a vlogcast. I'll, well, essentially that's what a podcast is. But I'm gonna edit it up and chop it up so like everything won't be used. But I gotta figure oh, okay. out how quickly yeah. I can do it. Yeah, that's a lot more work than what you're doing now. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Yeah. But I. So you stop. Yeah. Did you like make an announcement about that? Yeah, but I don't think anyone pays attention or cares. Aww. <laughs> I, didn't. I well, remember I'm, you mentioning it. I'm but... trying to smoothly transition into a different way. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I have to figure out how to not make it as tedious. Right. As hard. Right. I have to figure, find out an easy way to like chop everything together. Hire an intern? I can't. Why? I, uh, I should have hired an intern seven years ago, but I never. <laughs> Some, so you've been editing your own stuff? Yeah. I've been yeah, doing everything by myself. Every project I've ever done myself, I've stopped after like eight months. Really? Pretty I, much. Well, I can't like trust anybody else. Yeah. It's just a lot of work. Get someone, get them to live in your house, edit your videos. <laughs> you could For tell, eight weeks. <laughs> you could tell, I'll donate a, person, a Japanese young boy. Also, but those people will... If someone like gets on board and you're it's like... their vision. No, but also they'll stop after, they'll get bored after two weeks. Well, but if they're getting paid, I guess. Do you pay high interns? You can. Yeah, you Canada, man. <laughs> Canada. Have you released one yet? The next station nope. is King This week Tokyo. is the first. This is the first one? The yeah. doors on the right side will open. Tokyo and the Hanukkah. I need to do more stuff line. like that. I need to find something to do. With. Talk about John. I don't think anyone would care about a vlog of mine. I think if you do karate kicks with Mike Bailey. I've thought about that actually. You know what I told M Dog to do years ago? I should I go, you should do a, a flip a day or something on Instagram or whatever. Oh yeah, that'd be good. I thought just like getting in the ring with like wrestlers before a show and just filming a little thing where like either I show them a technique or they show me one. Like if it's anyone from any kind of martial arts background, like if they just show a cool takedown that they know. What about speedball self-defense? Oh, that's pretty good. What about speed balls? <laughs> it's just your show balls. balls. Yeah. <laughs> Helicoptering your dick. <laughs> so Joey Ryan could teach you how to grab his dick. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good one, actually. People would love that. All right, I do want to tell you about our sponsor today. It is Squarespace, and they make websites for you. You make websites. Squarespace will make your new business or idea stand out. Create your idea or unique website with a beautiful template created by a world-class designer, Showcase your work, blog, or publish content, even sell products and services of all kinds in just a few clicks. You can customize everything from look and feel to settings and products, optimize for mobile right away, and you can use their analytics to help you grow in real time. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. And if you get stuck, you need a little help, well, Squarespace has an award-winning 24-7 customer support. So many listeners tell me about their wrestling ideas, blogs, e-feds, comedy, anything. And I'm a firm believer in the landing page. I think it's super important. I still maintain ColdCabana.com. That's where I send everybody. I have the social media stuff, but there's nothing better than a professional-looking website. And that's what I would recommend to all of you. And you can get a free trial by heading to squarespace.com. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code Colt. Save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain at squarespace.com with the offer code Colt. And Squarespace would be very proud that they're sponsoring a man that wrestled in Japan. At Ryogoku Sumo Hall, myself and Joey Ryan... Um, I'll talk about me and Joey in a second, but Ethan Page, who I've had a one-on-one on the podcast a couple years ago, he's a guy who's trying to make his big breaks, trying to get something done, and he's still in that process. We're still in that idea of, like, what are we trying to do? Where are we trying to go with this career? And there is no finite answer. I guess that's something we've realized. Even my friends at WWE, I guess maybe some of like the 205 Live guys, it's like if they got fired tomorrow, they wouldn't be able to retire off of that money. It's it's just an ongoing long-term commitment you got to be in it for the long run and here's ethan page years later he's now on impact wrestling and he's here doing his first tour of japan ethan we just finished our matches yeah 
Why are you laughing? Because we did. Oh. And we're sitting... And yours was great. Oh, thanks, man. We're sitting watching... Um, I guess we're not watching, but it's yeah. just... Behind the curtain. Behind the curtain of a... I don't know, what do you think? It's... Dude, it's packed. Yeah, to the very top. So the sumo hall, the whole bottom is like where they watch sumo wrestling. And there's the bottom... The, the ring is in the middle, so there's chairs there. And then the whole there's a whole top tier, too, right? Yeah. That caught me off guard coming out, to be honest with you. Yeah, the whole top tier? Yeah. This is I, the most people I've ever wrestled. Yeah, I, what, what would you say? I mean, they said something. I think it holds eight or nine, but I... I, I heard four or five thousand. Four or five thousand, yeah. yeah. I, you know, I was thinking, because I've always said that, like, I, I did a match with Noah, and it was me and Hero versus uh, the KES, and it was in front of, like, 3,500. And I said that that was the biggest audience that cared about me. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I've done the... WWE matches, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but then I remember there was those, and we were talking about one PW. Oh no, I did like this Alex Shane Super Show in Covered Tree. I think there was like thirty five hundred yeah. or two. But this, like, this beats both of those. Oh, they they were like all about your guys' characters and stuff. Like I finished right before yours, and I rushed back because they have the monitors in the back to watch. Okay, because I was curious, and it was awesome. How how did it take? But I mean, this is about, about this is your first tour of Japan. Yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, what, 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 is, what are you going to take away from What are you going to take away about Wrestling in Japan I learned that I know how to wrestle <laughs> Like Ethan it, Page never, <laughs> never short about bragging about No no I, I came here with very low self esteem Yeah Because I was like oh this is like wrestling And I assumed that they watched my American stuff And were like oh he's like a character He'll fit into DDT but Kikutaro pushed me to them because I'm a big wrestler, and I had no idea that that's what they wanted me for. A big guy. Yeah, so when I came Which is here... It's funny because, not to cut you off, but um, there's so many more big guys. You're 6'2", 6'1"? Six yeah, 6'2", two, six yeah. 250. Like you can go grab a... You can go grab fucking... Anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody. And, uh, and that's what they wanted, so like I literally had to change 90% of like how I put my matches together. So. Over here? Yeah. Just like structurally. like I would never do like... No selling tackles or no selling clotheslines or gorilla pressing people, but that's what I've been doing here. Every, everyone's so much smaller than you are. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what they wanted, so I was like, okay. And that's what I'll take back. Is like, did they tell you they were like, this is what we wanted? Yeah. They like, didn't say big, Ethan. They said Ethan. Yeah, Ethan, big big wrestler, please. What about big the, man? What about the culture, dude? I, what blew <laughs> me away because Toronto is like my big city or Niagara Falls. Tokyo is the cleanest place I've ever been yeah. in my life with the most respectful people. Uh, I thought I did something wrong because the when I was using my credit card, this lady turned her back to me. And I was like, oh, what did I say? Like, I asked the translator. He's like, no, no, she doesn't want to know your pin. Your pin. And I was like, damn. Like, it's just like a respect here. Is- yeah. uh, there was something on Facebook that I saw about, like, the difference between clean Japanese toilets and bathrooms. Ooh. And they were, like, showing the difference. Now, now, the American one they showed was very, like... Very stereotypical, but it was like that gas. But being on the road, those gas stops, we've seen Dude, those really gross ones, right? Yeah. Butts being put out in there. Just clogged. Crazy toilets. I, I, I actually wanted to talk to you about this before. I took a dump here, and this is a sumo arena. Yeah. These toilets made me feel like the smallest human being on earth. Oh, okay. Have you gone in there yet? No, not here. Massive. They're, they're tiny. No, they're no. no. They yeah. made me feel tiny. Oh. Because they need to be big enough for sumo wrestlers. Oh. Yeah, so they're oh. big. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's... Yeah. I haven't even thought about yeah. it. Oh, funny. Yeah, I'll yeah. go, I go take, Industrial, a yeah. Yeah, I'll take a deuce. Industrial, yeah. I'll take a deuce right now. That's so interesting. All right. Well, cool. You have a good match? Yeah, I had a lot of fun. All right. A lot of fun. And fun tour. Fun, yeah. And I'm excited. You had a long time. Yeah, five weeks. This is my last week. So this week flew by because Bailey was here and then you came. And then next week will fly by too. But I stayed an extra week so I can wrestle in Cork and Hall. Oh, you didn't get to wrestle in Cork and Hall yet? Not yet. So okay. that's my last show. Oh, good. So next week we'll, we'll get your reaction to yeah. Cork and Hall. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Because to be on the show again? Yeah. Or to wrestle in Cork and Hall? No, to wrestle in Cork and Hall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not to be on my show where we talk about you and Cork and Hall. Oh, I'm excited about <laughs> <Okay>. that, yeah. <laughs> and Mood is on the show today and Mira Fuji. And it's like cool. Did you, did you know the referee for DDT, Matsui? Yeah. Like. Did, did he spark a? Did he spark a reaction for you? Like I, he's like in all the legendary like Michinoku pro comedy matches. He's the oh, comedy. He's referee. like the. Oh, I don't want to 
He's like Bryce Rimsburg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't know if you knew that. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So like the first time I met him, I like literally got on my knees and like bowed down to him. <laughs> I was just, he's, he's like, oh, what? I was like, oh, legend, legend, legend. And I got the... Yeah, everyone here is so like very nice and very cool. Good. And like, it's a warm locker room. Yeah. And it has been a nice locker room, and it was an amazing show. I mean, I see it the way of this this misfit group, and I haven't been here from the beginning. Kenny Omega would be a, a better person to kind of talk about it because, you know, a lot of you guys are very aware, or some of you might be not aware at all, but the group that I'm wrestling for now, DDT, was where Kenny Omega moved to Japan to be a part of, and that's kind of where he became a star, him and Ibushi. Him and Ibushi were the DDT kind of like aces for years. And then they moved on essentially to freelance wrestlers and to become New Japan wrestlers. But this show, I mean, in all essence, DDT should just be like, maybe not even a mockery, but it is in the way of, I guess, ECW a little bit, just like the land of the misfits, people who there were no spots for. It's people who see wrestling very differently. And should be like in front of 100 people in a weird bar in L.A. It essentially should be bar wrestling. But for some reason, it is really connected. And they're able to essentially sell out Sumo Hall 4,000 plus people. And it's exciting for me as a wrestler because it's one of their biggest shows of the year. It's all gauntlet matches, eight-man tags, six-man tags. Even the Great Muda was in a six-man tag, although I, I feel if he wanted to be in a singles match, he could be. But due to his knees, which probably aren't that capable, he was in a six-man tag. But there was only two singles matches, the main event, and then the second match, which was myself and Joey Ryan. And per their request, please, as much crazy as possible. And if you saw the match, I mean, it wasn't like the craziest. And I was a little worried in terms of, the office, I guess, I don't know if they had some kind of vision for like a million run-ins or fireworks or, I mean, you got to understand on this show, there was an anal explosion match and my boss, Mr. Takagi, pushed a button to which his ass exploded and that's a real thing. <laughs> so when they say to Joey and I, please go crazy, to me, that's a lot of pressure. There is a match where someone's ass explodes. Don Shuko Dino got misted in his asshole. A lot of ass play in this, but it's okay we have Joey Ryan and his penis. Afterwards, the office loved it. Everyone seemed to really enjoy it. Of course, some people on Twitter and social media and Facebook did not enjoy it. And I don't know why I look for those things, but I do. But the match got real fun reactions in real time and online. And I grabbed Joey right before we headed to the merch stand. I changed up the show to where I just record on here like little bits and pieces. Ah, different format. Yeah. Instead of interviews? Instead of interviews. Interviews are played out a little bit, maybe? I think so. Maybe. Yeah, so now I'm kind of doing, like, in the moment, I guess. Okay. Do you want me on? Yeah. Well, just, it's about, like, what my, my week is. My big name talent? No. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm being the elite's uh, cast member, Joey Ryan. Uh, is that what you go with now? That's the big, I mean... Is that your big draw now? I'll tell you what, man. It's, it's crazy, the... Like, I was in Australia last week, and they had the Bucks and Marty were on the show, and people came up to me at the merch table and were like, oh, I, uh, first time I ever heard of you, and being the elite. And the Bucks told me that, like, people come up to them all the time and say, like, I don't even watch your wrestling, yeah, I, just, yeah. I watch your being the elite. The Bucks were like, people were like, we don't, we didn't, we've never heard of you, we just seen you on being yeah, the elite. right. <laughs> so, like, that, I mean, it draws an audience, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it gets, you know, whatever, in two days it gets 200,000 views, I mean, that's... It's, it's not like you know it's not world changing figure but it's not nothing either you know what i mean it's not yeah. like when roh tv is on tv i don't i never see one tweet uh, that's true so it's like you know there's two hundred thousand people automatically it's true that's very true i see i think tv numbers are bullshit in terms of like i don't know that's why i think i think like youtube and podcast downloads are so and that's why people like to get such huge fans through that stuff whereas TV unless it's like NBC right. or Stranger well, Things well I mean that's always like the that's always like the thing with like you know like uh, something like a championship president from Hollywood who has like a you know a TV audience and there's people watching that show but they're yeah, not, but they say but it's like 900,000 people but they're not it's not but it's not necessarily like like you're, the people watching it aren't the people that are like 
going to go buy your merchandise or, you know, or they're, you know, they're not, you're not really, it's not really going to dent your fan base. It's people like maybe kind of flipping through the channels, maybe yeah. passing by. I mean, I'm sure there's some, there's some, there's a dedicated fan base of wrestling fans, but those numbers can be tri- just by triggered by just somebody flipping through the channels and stopping, not somebody, that, you know, I, 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 I can't say that like, I mean, I can't say never, but I, I mean, I, I don't think the, when I, when I get booked places, even when I was on featured on that show more, it was, people would come and be, oh, I've watched you on Championship Wrestling with Molly. Well, you know, I, a little bit, but not always. People did or did not? Did that. not, did not. Uh, Is that, that does sound bad, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's beca- I'll edit it up. But it's because you're, uh, I was going to say, it's because you're jet lag right now. You're just talking. Oh. Talking out of my ass? I just wanted to know how your jet lag was. Oh. Uh, you got in last night. Yesterday, yes. Yesterday, at what time? Four o'clock my flight landed. Four p.m. Yeah, and you didn't go right to. You stayed up all night. No, 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 no. I, I slept, but not a lot. Like I slept maybe four or five hours total because oh, okay. of the jet lag or like the time difference. Uh, and then we just wrestled tonight. Yeah. So you, when you because so we did a thing. It's okay because we shook hands afterwards. We're yeah. friends. We're friends now. <laughs> Where I had you flip your own self with your penis plex. Yeah. As you do it, are you like, oh, Jim Cornette's going to hate this? I don't think about Jim Cornette. Like, so... But he, or the representation of him. He's the representation right, of the people right. that... Well, I feel like... I feel like, and, and actually, like... Cody Rhodes was the one who pointed this out to me, is that he's like... He said, like, Jim Cornette's just a shock jock. He's going to say whatever to get attention. And there's always somebody from our generation that's going to bite for a little while, whether it's Steen or Omega or the right, Bucks or is, me. There is they're a They're going to bite, people. and then they're going to realize... Then you're going to realize, like, oh, he's... He baited me into this. Kudos to him. And then you're going to stop replying, and then he's going to move on to wherever Sammy Callahan or Joey Janela, whatever he's on today. But when you do something like that, and I too, are you worried about like people being like, oh, or the people that hate your style of wrestling? Uh, Does that even cross your mind? No, because it's 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 the, it, it's a skewed. We see a skewed version of it on the internet because like we read tweets, but like the majority of. I feel like the wrestling fans, they don't, they're not on Twitter like searching for... Yeah. Here's what I worry about, is that when I'm doing something like that, that like, it, people are going to love it, but then there's going to be like people in the crowd who are like, what is this? But then I re-say that to myself, we're wrestling for DDT, the silliest wrestling promotion in the world. Right. And like, honestly, it's, it's so weird because like those, those, those diehard fans that are going to bash it online are probably... And, and they're going to say like, oh... You know, this is such a, a niche thing that, like, you're not going to draw the casual fan with it. But I find that it's like the exact opposite. Like, I feel like the only the real dedicated fans are the ones who don't like it, and the casual fans that come up to me at, sure. at shows are like in love with it. Oh my god, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, so I, I feel like it's like I don't know. Like, I I can't really if if we're looking at results, it's like. My merch flies off the, the, the merch table at shows I do the dick stuff at. Mm-hmm. The casual fans are the ones that are like, oh, I have to have that guy's shirt. Right, right. Yeah, I guess that's how I would be if I went to like a concert and someone was just like rocking it. Yeah. Like, Holy shit, I think I want that person's shirt. Yeah. If I'm a casual person at a music or like at a comedy, I guess comedians don't sell that stuff. Yeah. But I get, yeah, I think at a, at a music show, there was something like, what did I, what did I see? At, the, at Fest, I saw. Um, Max Sabbath. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. It's Black Sabbath with McDonald's. Yeah, right, right. And I just saw his merch. I was like, this guy's fucking great. I have to get this stuff. Yeah. Right? And I don't know. And he probably gets shit on online for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yeah, good. That's a good uh, analogy. He's not a real mus- musician. He's uh, he's just a m- making a mockery of the music business. He's making a mockery of, of McDonald's. Yeah. How dare you? Oh, well. All right, get some rest. No. Get some rest. We have like another hour left of the show. Well... Then go sleep in a corner somewhere. It feels like we wrestled two days ago. <laughs> I'm glad Joey's doing so well with his merch that he can buy a, a half a million dollar house. Something I would never put online, but Joey Ryan decided to put online. And I'm trying with merch. I'm doing merch. Of course, uh, I use stamps.com, and that is a sponsor today. Guys, girls, we're getting everything on demand these days. Our wrestling, our radio, just like this podcast, like you're doing right now. You should be doing the same thing with your postage 
is Stamps.com. Stamps.com has all the amazing services of the post office, but it's right in front of you at your desk 24-7. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package using your own computer and printer. Click, print, mail, and you're done. The mail person will literally pick it up from your door. I'm taking orders while I'm in Japan, and when I get home, I'm going to be using Stamps.com for ColtMerch.com. I was using Stamps way before they even became a sponsor, which actually makes them the perfect sponsor. That's who should be sponsoring the shows, companies that you use and like and want to tell other people about. I started my little Colt Merch biz, and I needed to stop going to the post office every day. And that's why I use them. And you should be using them too. Use the code Colt and get up to $55 in free postage, a digital scale, and a four-week trial. Just go to stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click on the radio microphone at the top of the homepage and type in Colt. We did go right to the merch stand after that. And what I like about the idea of the merch stand in Japan is essentially, I guess we're a bit of a freak show because we're these foreign wrestlers But I think in my head, and I may be wrong because, you know, I probably am wrong because there's a lot of smart fans who watch the American wrestling. But in my head, they watched me. They weren't sure they weren't sure who I was. And I made a fan of them. And now I'm in DDT. They're a fan of mine and they're coming up and they're buying merchandise and they're and I want them over. I don't speak the language. I don't speak the language. I only did it through body positioning, through facials, through my wrestling or lack of wrestling or dick touching or whatever it might be. And I see that as the ultimate compliment. When someone comes up and buys a picture, it's because I won them over as a fan in Japan. Right? Like I can understand in America, people like the podcast or the, or the YouTube stuff or the documentaries or whatever. And that's why you can be a fan. Some people are fans of mine. have never even seen me wrestle and they would want to buy some merchandise or support me or whatever it might be. But in this situation, I feel the same thing's going to happen in China, and I'm very interested to see what happens in China. I have no clue what's going to happen. But for me, in this instance, I want them over in the ring, and then they wanted to take a picture and buy a picture or a T-shirt or whatever it might be. Also, the Japanese don't have pop sockets. Did you guys know that? Not a thing over here. They got those rings. They like the rings. They don't have the pop sockets. So it was just one show at Sumo Hall, and then six days off. Next week, we will be wrestling in Corican Hall. You heard it from Ethan Page. So a lot of time off, and you always ask yourself, man, what did these guys in all Japan in the 1980s do when they had time off and no internet? I can sit on the phone. I can make an, I can upload a podcast. These guys, they had the newspaper, which was in Japanese. I don't even know why I said the newspaper. They had the TV, which was in Japanese. They could maybe watch a baseball game or something. Or they had drugs and alcohol. And you know they did a lot of drugs and alcohol. So I guess we can say that the internet saved the gaijin wrestler over in Japan. And you guys say that the internet is bad. It saves lives. It's been saving lives since 2005. I know the internet's been around longer. I did my first tour in 2005, 2006, January 2006, and we had to go to an internet cafe for a half hour a day, and that was sanity. Like, I'd watch my DVD player. I had the sa- I watched the same goddamn Chappelle show a million times, and then I'd get that sweet, sweet freedom at the internet cafe for $5 for a half hour. Other than that, we did the usual touring around as, uh, as Am- I say Americans, but, you know, Ethan Page and Mike Bailey are Canadians. So we've been doing the typical stuff, going for some sponsored dinners. Some nice people have been taking us out to eat. Picked up some merchandise. Went to the new Totocon. If you go to YouTube and you type in Totocon, T-O-U-D-O-U-K-A-N, I gave like a, a cool vlog tour of the place, and they have moved. So we went to the new place. I picked up some stuff. I picked up some old uh, Japanese magazines I'll probably sell at WrestleCon. Ethan Page and Mike Bailey sold their, uh, sold their outfits, another Japanese tradition. For those of you being Elite fans, Fat Masa is the ultimate broker. He got that done for us. And we wait. When I turn this off, I'm going to be heading on over to a puppy cafe. That's right, a puppy cafe. We're starting a new tradition after the show at the very end. You will be asking my mom any question, and she will gladly answer it. She's a 71-year-old Jewish mensch who who basically knows nothing about professional wrestling, and I love her to death. Stick around for that. But right now, I want you to hear some plugs and... Upcoming events! 
The best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram, at ColtCabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast, also slash ColtCabana, my storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of all the art of wrestlings are ad-free on StitcherPremium.com slash Colt. Use the code Colt, get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter want to put me on your upcoming show or convention. I got a YouTube channel. I got a website, ColtCabana.com. I also got a P.O. box where you can send me something fun. Upcoming! This Sunday, I'll be in Corkin Hall, Tokyo, Japan, DDTUniverse.com, April 5th through the 8th, New Orleans, Louisiana, WrestleCon.com. Thursday, I'm doing a super show. Saturday morning, I'm doing Pancakes and Power Drivers. Marty DeRosa is my tag team partner. And Saturday night, I'm doing commentary for Ring of Honor. April 14th, Wenzhou City, China, UnitedWrestlingTV.com. Thursday, April 19th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Facebook slash ICW Milwaukee. Friday, April 20th, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, ZelloPro.com. Saturday and Sunday, April 21st and 22nd, Dallas and Denton, Texas, Imperial Wrestling Revolution.com. Huge thank you to you guys at home. Thanks for everyone joining me on the show today. Rekka, Mike Bailey, Joey Ryan, Ethan Page. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone. Super fun. Yeah, yeah. Rocket Ship did the theme music. Jimmy Lee and James Musselwhite helped me with the new artwork. Highspots.com is still a sponsor. They have an amazing VOD service. They have the $5 Wrestling's Kevin Steen shows, PWG. AMA knee pads, you can get gear there, you can get masks there, you can get a wrestling ring there. OneHourTees.com, they help run ProWrestlingTees.com, that's where you can support your favorite independent wrestler directly. And now, a new segment to end the weekly show, hashtag AskCabanaMom. Just tweet me at Cole Cabana with the hashtag Ask Cabana Mom and ask her something you'd want to know. I can send her pics and some short videos, but please know she's not going to know what the best WrestleMania is. So ask smart and be creative. This week at Marty DeRosa, he asks, who is the most handsome wrestler? The question that I've been asked is who do I think is the most handsome wrestler? I've met quite a few through the years. A. Steele was good looking. Adam Pierce was a hunk. Joy Lethal is very macho. And Kenny King was even asked to be on The Bachelor. The Bullet Club wrestlers are really quite virile. But if I had to choose just one handsome wrestler, I have to go with Andre the Giant. Now you may ask, why would I go with this choice? Well, French men are very sexy. And I go for tall, dark, curly-haired men. So that is my final answer. Mom, I, I love how this weirdly became who wants to be a millionaire. Great job. I love you. This has been The Art of Wrestling. For Cole Cabana, I'm Cole Cabana. Thanks. Thanks.